Thank you. Oh, thanks. Thank you for having me, um, and thank you for still being here so late. <laughs> so actually, from uh, going from uh, looking at uh, company structures and the way companies are uh, organized, what we just heard now, I'm going to uh, move to another topic, is, uh, which, in, which is about how commons on the ground are actually structured. I'll actually start with a, with a quote from uh, a woman who, uh, actually the first woman to won, uh, win the Nobel Prize for uh, Economic Sciences, only in 2009. Um, she's called Eleanor Ockström, who unfortunately passed uh, away in 2012. And um, she said, caring for the commons has to be a multiple task, organized from the ground up and shaped towards cultural norms. It had to be discussed face to face and it had to be based on trust. Um, she, ca she cautioned against uh, single governmental units at global level to solve the collection action problem against environmental um, destruction. So, and yet, until today, we are holding on to uh, centralized, panoptic, um, you know, top-down models. So how can we, with the technology that we have today, implement all these beautiful things that are available to us, like um, data gathering, predictive analysis, and yet to align incentives in a polycentric way, um, sustaining the health of our planet and actually su um, sustaining those who are taking care of the most uh, um, important ecosystems that we have that are at the frontier. Um, so with other words, how can we actually satisfy our hunger for data and at the same time empower uh, the indigenous groups, uh, the farmers, uh, and the people who protect the living systems on the ground? So when we speak about environmental challenges today, um, it's almost impossible not to speak about um, climate justice, empowerment, and about decolonization. Um, one of the best examples is, um, for example, I, I spoke last week in Iceland, of all places, I spoke to the leader of the Maasai, and uh, I, I learned that um, they were able to sustain their resource pool, the shared resource pool, for hundreds uh, and hundreds of years, until colonizers came in, nationalized the land, kicked the Maasai off, and in the shortest planetary time, over-harvested the land. Um, so, we in the Western world, um, we love maps. Uh, I love maps. Actually, the company that I'm building is a, a 3D model of the planet, and I'm using all those wonderful tools that we have today. However, um, the problem with, with data is that um, it is only telling the story of the one who's building the model. Um, a model does not sh show a reality, it's creating a reality, right? And um, our models are always assumption by design. So we love simple stories. We want our stories to add up because this is how we market our stories. Um, and as every VC uh, says, you have to tell it in a way that a child understands it. But our children grow up with our myths and our stories and once these stories are locked into a model and siloed away, these stories cannot be questioned any longer. We spent the last 50 years um, dealing with the consequences of colonization, trying to fix them, and at the same time, with uh, exponentially growing AI, with um, data and image capture, we are risking to reinstall um, this level of colonization again. So this is Eleanor. And uh, it's not a wonder that she's um, experiencing a, a resurgence right now. I think the reason why she never hit mainstream, although she won a Nobel Prize, is because um, her theories force people to look at complexity, and that's, we, we don't like that. Um, so she solved something that was called the tragedy of the commons. The tragedy of the commons was a very strong belief in the 80s, 90s, 2000s that was uh, based on a ge game theoretical assumption propagated mainly by the Rand Corporation that um, basically said if two people that cannot talk to each other, like two prisoners, if they would collaborate, if they chose to collaborate with each other, they would both have the best outcome. However, the prisoner's dilemma assumes that they will all both betray each other because they won't trust each other, ending up with uh, the lesser prison sentence.
So this is her quote, the re uh, there's no reason to believe that bureaucrats and politicians, no matter how well-meaning, are better at solving problems than the people on the spot who have the strongest incentive to get the solution right. And this is basically what she did in governing the commons. She showed that if that governance systems are on the ground, that she studied irrigation systems in Nepal, she studied hundreds and hundreds of years of farming practices, and she found out that if, even though people don't know each other, they trust each other because they depend on the same resource pool. So s trust is a central role. Not to design rules, but frameworks is really important because if you want to fit the ecological systems, you have to have guidelines, you can ha never have rules because they never fit all. Um, polycentric system always do better than centralized systems and panaceas are potentially dysfunctional, meaning there's no one remedy for all. Uh, these are her slides from her Nobel Prize speech. Um, they're messier than mine, even. In the exp yeah. um, she studied forests around the world. It's just the repetition of what it, I, I just said. Um, so why now? We live in a time in which we have more information at our fingertips than ever. And it is absolutely astounding that with all this information, there is more mistrust in the world than ever. Um, there's also a false belief that information leads to mind change. Actually, there's a long um, um, Stanford report that says um, stop, uh, cre uh, stop um, creating awareness already, meaning that people presented with information doesn't mean that they change the beliefs they hold on to. Um, we have huge challenges when actually wanting to empower um, and, and to work with people affected on the ground, as for example in the Amazon, um, um, empowering indigenous tribes in the face of the Amazon fires. Well, one of the biggest projects, uh, pr problems that we have is a lack of verification of impact on the ground. Um, so, dispowerment of locals is the number one reason why corruption on the ground is standing actually in the way of change. Um, if, I'm, if I'm a company this, that is, that is um, offsetting a lot of, uh, uh, is, is actually producing a lot of CO2 and is pumping it into the air, the only possibility I have is to go to companies like Atmosphere or uh, Red Plus and to invest into a portfolio of, of, uh, of, of projects on the ground that are planting trees, are reforesting. However, I don't really have any information about where these trees are being planted, if it's not just fast-growing eucalyptus trees, and if there is actually an impact made on the ground, there is no visibility. So this leads to a decision fatigue, and um, supporters have a growing mistrust in institutions and are wondering if their contributions are even um, leading to a positive outcome. And the third challenge is that NGOs and organizations don't really work with each other, and they spend, because they use social media, to, to stay in touch with their user base. They spend more, more money on marketing and social media performance, uh, which actually, in a strange way, led to a lot of division nowadays. Um, I'm not going to talk much about um, Earth today, but um, what basically every developer knows that is uh, joining my team is we're going to spend significant time on the ground working with um, indigenous tribes and we're not going to have a smart, um, a smart um, you know, like we're not going to, to write any smart contracts out of Berlin not knowing what's going on on the ground. It's, a, it's going to be, we, we really try to understand how can we create a rule set that makes sense on the ground and how can the technology that we're developing and that we're distributing uh, be implemented right there. So in that, uh, case, Dolores, I would like to um, actually um, contradict you because you asked for somebody to, to contradict you. And even though I agreed um, with mo most that you said, um, I would say that the blockchain space shouldn't be forgotten because it is maybe not the blockchain space, <laughs> but this entire ecosystem, this entire ecosystem is uh, is helping to develop tools like private keys, um, distributed databases all things that are extremely important to us if we want to bring back a salt polycentric way of dealing with information and data and empowering those people to actually take care of their own data, um, which is... Thank you. <laughs> um, so again, I spent some time in Borneo, I spent some time there on the ground with climate activists uh, working um, against 
palm oil industry is taking over their lands. I learned the following. This is what should, have, should happen, but still this is the reality on the ground. So if we keep people at a m poverty margin that doesn't actually allow them to even protect the lands that we all depend on, because not only they depend on that resource pool, we depend on it, then nothing's going to change. And don't get me wrong, I'm, ooh, I'm all for, um, you know, I, we, 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 we need AI, we need machine learning developments to understand um, how to reduce uh, water waste in farming, how to assess energy consumption and to lower it, where, you know, we have massive data storages, we need to understand how to, um, 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 you know, be less wasteful with energy grids, with energy consumptions in country, city, individual household, CO2 emissions. However, my problem is that there is too less of a citizen participation and there's no shared data pool that allows e every citizen to even understand what we're talking about, which leads to the divide between, you know, information and not understanding what's going on. Um, this is a project I really like. It was spearheaded by Joy Ito, um, the former uh, head of MIT Media Lab. Um, when when the nuclear disaster happened in Japan, um, his wife and his child were there. They knew very fast that the radiation levels that were given out by the government were not correct. So they assembled a team together of cross-disciplinary students, engineers, um, economists, and they created SafeCast. It's a citizen science project. And it's a network of trust in which basically citizen scientists and researchers came together. They crowdsourced the necessary data. They open pooled it. Um, they developed governance models from within. Um, and collectives and governance are important because they are the, always the corrective to the monolith. Um, and for all technologists out there, it's very important for us to remember, we are not making something, we are adapting something that we're part of. So now they moved on from radiation to air quality. Um, they're basically creating, either they're showing other independent organizations how to basically create credible and open data pools. Um, you can build your own B. Geige Nano. You can just go onto their website and do it yourself. Um, and this can, of course, be applied to oil, air quality, to, to, you know, to many, many other measurements that we need to know about what's going on in our environments. Another great um, example of citizen science, if you want so, a 19-year-old kid who's now 25, uh, dropped out of Delft University and made it his um, mission to basically take, part of, take, take the challenge to solve a problem that should actually be all of our challenge because it's, it's basically our waste that is in the oceans. It's the big garbage patch that's ginormous. And it's uh, interesting that we are, although Eleanor Ostrom showed how governance could work, that we're not able to take care of our shared um, resource pool, which is our planet Earth. So he uh, built those nets that can take out massive parts of the plastic uh, out of the ocean. He can go down to two millimeters, which is astounding. And he has only raised $5 million for a $100 million project. $100 million is nothing at that scale. He has only raised five. So we really need to also understand and think where the governance systems are in taking care of our, our resource pools. And this is why we're building Earth. We want to support people like this. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>